Ladies and gents, welcome back to Apex Investor. Today's story is all about Hollow. And I forgot to mention yesterday, but for the first time in over, I want to say a month, I've never seen Hollow in the popular trending stocks on Yahoo Finance. Yesterday was the first day. Today, it was also there. And not only was it trending in the popular stocks, it was also listed there during trading hours because it was it was mentioned or not really mentioned it was if you do a search uh or not what is it in the search bar where you you look at popular trending stocks and on yahoo finance in the off hours whether it's pre-market or after market hours uh hollow would show up sometimes very seldomly maybe i've seen it once or twice Yesterday and today marked the first day, and yet by yesterday I mean Monday. Monday marked the first time that Hollow was actually appearing in the trending searches. So we have a breakout, and I think that's why you're seeing the volume just skyrocketing. So what can I say about today? But my goodness, it was up at 46 cents today, between 33 to 46, pretty much 47 cents. And uh, the volume was 180. <laughs> repeat that, 183 million, 183 million. That's the volume we need. So whoever's pushing this volume, I don't think it's only retail investors. Maybe it is. I don't know. I feel like there's whales involved. But look at that surge right at the start. Right at uh, 9:40, and then was brought back down to 33. Staying above 30 cents, if you look at the last month, just look at that, it, it is a lot higher than where it was. It's the highest it's been since September, the beginning of September. And we're due for the reverse split any any day now, uh, pending the approval. We don't even know if it's been approved. There hasn't been any news on that, as far as I know. Um can it go back to a dollar before the reverse split? We'll see if that happens. I think it probably gets to 70 cents. That looks like the resistance in the short to midterm. And that's all I'll say about that. Next is complete Solaria, down 12%. I just wanted to look at this for my own benefit and to see what is going on with this solar powered stock. So this is relatively stable. Uh, it's a good play. Not at this price, obviously. I would wait for this to go to a dollar. No, 26 cents, sorry. Wait for this to go to 26 cents or a dollar and lower, but I'd, I'd probably, I would wait for 26 cents as my entry point. 25 cents. Do not buy this uh, above 50 cents. And then it's ready to trade at two dollars or so. Their volume is uh, above the average too. Okay, I'm gonna look at some news. Why is the Philippines imposing a 12% value-added tax on Netflix? I'm just curious to see what is going on here. Um, Okay, so they're complaining that Netflix is not contributing to their economy. Oracle investing $6.5 billion to set up cloud facilities in Malaysia. I'm not sure why the move to Malaysia. Maybe it, it's cheaper for labor. Um, growing demand for AI. Uh Okay, I don't want to, I'm not sure how to sum up this, but uh, so we have the Philippines and then and we have Malaysia. Um, so they're investing uh, in Southeast Asia, a data center, sorry, the development of a data center. Uh, Microsoft also announced, announced a, an investment of $1.7 billion in Indonesia. And then Amazon 
announced plans to invest $9 billion in Singapore and $5 billion in Thailand. So we can see they're taking business elsewhere, folks. They're <laughs> not investing in America. They are leaving. Maybe they are predicting a win for the Democrats, perhaps, because they're not very good with the economy from being you know, honest about everything. Uh, look at inflation. Just look at everything going on, right? It's just uh, it's a disaster right now. BlackBerry appoints Lisa Bahash to its board of directors. Who is Lisa Bahash? Uh, experience in the automotive sector. I don't know what she's going to do to turn things around. Uh, personally, if I was BlackBerry, I would probably sign someone who's very... Uh, What's the word? Innovative, like an artist, with an artist kind of mind. Um, yeah, because it's just not turning around for them. We need somebody like a Steve Jobs, uh, Elon Musk kind of brain, because they're just they are down the dumps, and I don't see any any uh, path. Not not path. I don't see that things will turn around anytime soon. I remember they used to be in the hundreds of dollars per share. Yeah, I remember when they were at 138 per share and how the mighty have fallen because they just refused to adopt the smartphone technology until it was too late uh, in 2010. It just, I don't know, BlackBerry needs to get into other things. They, they can't just stick to whatever they're doing now. They have to uh, diversify their business, you know, kind of do what Nintendo did in the 1970s and 80s where they didn't just stick to whatever they're doing making toys and love hotels they were actually they went into video games and that's you know that's the story right that's that's how things panned out for them and blackberry needs to do a similar thing because they are trapped in this really bad limbo they can't seem to find their footing anymore Maybe they're going to be bite up. I don't know. So I'm going to head over to the Reddit, subreddit, and open the tabs that I think are relevant. <clears throat> if I can do that. Oh, what happened? Okay, so I was just, maybe I was talking to myself the whole time. I guess I wasn't, I wasn't recording. But basically, this is the best post for today in case I wasn't recording the subreddit here. Uh... So the question is why the holdup, what is happening with the reverse split? And this user says, for the first time in my seven years of trading, I decide to not go through a reverse split in a stock. And for the first time ever, that same stock goes up in a crazy run instead of tanking. And in all fairness, this is also my first time getting into, actually not my first time, but First time in a long time investing in a Chinese stock that is a pump and dump. And I've done that before with XPeng, with uh, other Chinese stocks, but I learned my lesson very quickly. However, it seems I haven't learned my lesson because I got into hollow after looking at the the data and looking at the charts, mostly with the three three peat of the <laughs> the pump and dump. Uh so I think it's the first, it's a lot of firsts for a lot of us. And this uh, user responds to the question of, regarding when is the reverse split, saying they're not required to do anything until February. So that's true. It's a good reminder. At that point, the 180 day period to get their stock above a dollar expires. And they only voted on a proposal to do a, another reverse split last Friday. We don't know if the vote was unanimously yes. We don't know. Or if it was no, I'm, I'm guessing it was yes because they want to make money. If they want to go out of business and burn 108 million US dollars, then they voted no. But I think 99% chance they did vote yes. However, we do not know when the reverse split is happening and we're taking shots in the dark. Uh, just in case... I wasn't recording. I don't know if I was, but just in case I, I wasn't, uh, this individual proposes a a date of Tuesday, October the eighth, 
and I'm going to game this and, and play with this proposal. Let's say it does happen on the October the 8th because it seems it's a golden week holiday in China, so they won't be trading on the 7th, perhaps? I don't know. I can't confirm or deny that. We'll see. But let's, let's game this right now. Okay, October the 8th, the reverse split happens. I'm going to entertain that idea, that suggestion. So I think my personal opinion, again, I'm not a financial advisor. You can see that disclaimer at the bottom. A week from then to 10 days, so between the 15th to the 18th, we should see the price to start to move, not reaching the peak, but really building up momentum. Uh, hypothetically, again, let's say it, it, it uh, enters the reverse split at, at 30 cents. Okay, 30 cents. And you multiply that by 2, which is 60 times 10. That is then $6. So it'll enter at $6, hypothetically, again. And then it would spike. Let's say it spikes to $10 in the first seven to 10 days. In the next seven days, you should see at least a doubling. Okay, this is all speculation on my part. So $6 going to 10, maybe 12, and then doubling again, something like 20 to 24. So that is a very realistic expectation. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating and, and uh, creating false expectations. I think these are very realistic, grounded expectations, probably too low in all honesty, because if we look at the last three splits, they they were at $100 respectively. 100, 100, 100 plus, and then the third one, 66, if I'm not mistaken, and actually it did hit 100 during the third split, or the third split, the third peak, the third price price spike. Uh, so let's look at that just just to show you 112 something like that 112 and then it did hit 100 here but it's showing up as 90 93 uh, and then more recently 66 so to say it's going to go to 24 is uh, I still think it's a little too conservative that's why I'm leaning towards 40 but the important thing is it's not the price. I'm not, price is important, don't get me wrong, but it's about the timing. Timing is more important than, than the price because if we look at the patterns in regards to timing and the reverse split, the previous reverse split took place, uh, I believe it was end of January, beginning of February, and then the price spiked February 8th. So it took a week for it to hit the first spike. And then a week later into the 15th, we can see it really shot up to the, the true spike, the true peak, the true re resistance, you could say. Uh, that was the between the 15th to the, it's not showing up on, on here right now. Oh, here it is. Okay, February 16th. So it took about eight days, but then right away it, it got, came down. So from the first peak, you've got a week. And I've been saying this from from the first peak, count a week, that's the real peak. That's the real price, basically, the, the best price you should sell this at. So again, uh, let's pretend this is uh, October the 8th, not February. And a week from then, that would be the 15th. So October 15th, let's say it gets up to half of that, 14th. And then eight days later, we should see something like $33. That's very realistic. However, I, I also have to consider the other possibility that with all the volume we've been seeing in terms of money, this is the most uh, this is the most we've ever seen go into hollow out of all three spikes. So this could this could very well go to $100. There is a possibility 
for it to go to 100. It could smash this uh, third spike, for all we know, especially with the way things are going with the economy uh, and the attention this stock is getting, quite frankly. Just look at the volume, 183 million. Uh, and then when the, sh the shares are diluted, uh, not diluted, I mean, when the shares are the reverse of diluted, when you have the, the stock reverse splitting, you're only going to have so many shares, it's going to be a bloodbath in, in a sense. There's going to be a lot of people wanting to to cash in and join the gold rush for hollow. Uh, whether you like it or not, people just, they want to get rich quick and they want to join ride the wave. And that's what we see happening in the last week. <laughs> All these people are waking up to the potential of the stock. Uh, they knew 20 cents was the lowest it could go down to. They were trying to short this below 20 for a good, like, two weeks, and they just couldn't. So, you know, if you can't beat them, join them, I guess. So uh, they, they jumped on. Most of them jumped on at 23 cents. And we can see it's nearly doubled in the last week. And it's heading towards the next Valhalla, you could say, in uh, the pump and dump slash short squeeze, whatever you want to call it, price spike. Uh, they know what they're doing in terms of manipulating the market. And it has nothing to do with their product. It has nothing to do with their business. It just has to do with their... Actually, it has to do with business, but it's not their business per se. It's the business of pump and dump. <laughs> they know what they're doing when it comes to pump and dump. So it's a very high risk uh, gamble and proposition. I really shouldn't have taken this. It, this is not representative of what this channel is about. Apex Investor is not about gambling, but I'm stuck in this now and I've got to persevere and just uh, ride this wave and, and uh, just pray that it happens. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of us are doing. We're all praying to whatever God we believe in or, or whatever you want to say. We're just hoping and wishing and dreaming that this will go to at least 20 to 40. Right? Is that too much to ask for? I don't think so. We saw it happen three times previously. And then they're, they're gearing up for a potential uh, fifth squeeze because this will be the fourth. So they're trying to four-peat and they want to do a five-peat. And I don't want to be, I don't want any part in that, to be honest. It's too risky. And I hated to see, you know, my portfolio tanking. I hate to see that because it's very stress-inducing and, you know, your your price entry point will make you or break you. And for me, it's not looking so good. And I, I think a lot of us can sort of sympathize with uh, buying at a high price when the sentiment seems to be, you know, that is that is a good price, it seems, based on this chart. But we really don't know. You can't predict the future. You can only try based on the technical analysis that we do. And so an Apex Investor, we just look at the lowest price point. So $0.29 cents would have been the best entry point based on uh, this historical chart, twenty nine cents, but then it actually went down to twenty. So you should, you know, take another ten percent and say, okay, twenty. So uh, you know, it is it is a gamble. It's a risk. It's a high risk gamble. Uh, but we'll see how this plays out. We've looked at their fundamentals. We've looked at how they're debt free. We've looked at how they've got one hundred and eight million U.S. dollars in assets. We've looked at just a lot of the historical events that look that took place uh, with hollow in terms of the three previous uh, squeezes and uh, I think that's it so I'm just blabbering on and on but let's wait and see it's all about <laughs> that's all I could say in the last week or so besides the price uh, steadily rising in the net the, the last 48 hours uh, Actually, it's been steadily rising in the last two weeks, if we're going to be honest, last week or so. Since uh, the 18th, it's been on a reversal of its misfortunes.
So we hope the trend continues before the reverse split takes effect. For some reason, I feel like this is being orchestrated by the hollow people. They're, <laughs> they're like a race, the hollow people. That they are priming this themselves. I have no proof. I'm just speculating, just making things up. But could it be that they've got wads of cash and they're, they're priming it themselves because they know the higher the price is before the reverse split, they're going to do so much damage to the shorts and just make a killing? So say, for instance, they see a breakout to 70 cents plus, maybe even a dollar. But let's just say 70 cents, just to play it safe. 70 cents times 20, what is that? That's a dollar 40 times 10, that's $14. So right at the, the turn of the reverse split, $14, right? And... If it goes down a bit, let's say it goes down to 10, maybe even 7, So, but I like to say 10. It's probably going to double for the first spike, so 20, and then it'll probably double again, so 40. So that's why I say 20 to 40 is a very safe level, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. Okay, so I think I'll close there. Otherwise, I'm just rambling and rambling. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Until next time, God bless you, and God bless your investments, unless you're short.